What is up my Lorcana goons? Welcome back to the Lorcana goons channel. My name is Kevin and you're watching the breakdown of the Chicago DLC top 64 meta. So huge shout out to the Buena Tinta Lorcana on Twitter for posting this pie chart. This is the meta breakdown from the Disney Lorcana challenge happening in, in Chicago right now today Sunday um, currently top 64 is being played out I think they might be in in top 32 maybe top 16 speaking right now um, but the stream is delayed a little bit so it's uh, they're streaming like top 64 but this is the meta breakdown we have 22 ruby sapphire decks followed by um, 13 emerald steel decks then we have eight ruby amethyst decks nine sapphire steel decks and then some outliers over here we got two um ruby uh amber and we have two amber steel two emerald amethyst we have one emerald amber and one amethyst steel and in this video we're gonna break down a couple of these deck lists i'm gonna go over all of the cool outliers obviously the decks that stand out and then we'll go over some of the 22 ruby sapphire deck but obviously now we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Ruby Sapphire dominating this top cut, basically taking up a third of the top cut. Let's check out some of these deck lists. Uh, believe it or not, we have an Amber Steel deck list. First after Swiss, piloted by none other than Zach Bivens. Shout out, but Zach Bivens, true Lorcana goon, definitely, definitely deserving of this first place check it out he's playing amber steel song with flutes he has pride lands in this deck we have a couple of other things that stand out to me only two cinderella we have obviously the four copies of the ship goons targets the queen and the robin hood um some new cards from ursula's return being featured like ursula vanessa this card's pretty good in amber steel because it lets you sing zeus early on which is kind of nice and oftentimes the opponent is gonna um try to eliminate your cinderella ballroom sensation in the beginning of the game and you won't be able to sing your storm rage on or your strength of a raging fire so what's cool is that if you play ursula vanessa on turn two you will then able to have two different characters that can sync um these cards early on in the game which can be very impactful during today's uh, diablo format right uh, we also have some smees in here for some two drops we have grab your swords at two then we have our shiftable singable targets um for a whole new world robin hood and the queen with four rapunzel as well and obviously we're playing uh, three pride lands and four flute this is very interesting because they're both uninkable cards the uninkable count in this deck is pretty high but usually that's the case with amber steel and sometimes you can win with amber steel while still being on three maybe even just four ink which is kind of cool um but from what i was seeing the way he was playing it out it looked like sleepy Flute was mostly a closer uh you would kind of ramp in the beginning uh, not ramp sorry you would go kind of aggressive in the beginning of a game of your game depending on the matchup like if you're playing against red blue you want to be able to drop as many smees as possible so you can start gaining that two lore rapidly and then you can even capitalize on that by playing pride lands you start gaining some lore every turn and at the end of the game when you're already at 10 to 12 lore sleepy's flute plus a song is going to generate you at least one lore per turn so it's a pretty pretty cool deck to see um and end in first place in swiss i know a lot of people gave up on amber steel a lot of people don't think this deck is uh, is alive anymore they don't think it's real because of the difficulty of the uh, ruby sapphire matchup but to that i say go watch zach Bivens top 64 match and you can see you can see someone who knows how to pilot this deck really really play uh really really play it to the best of its ability so i do think amber steel is a very top contender in the meta still combining the pressure of pride lands and sleepy's flute is actually really crazy in my opinion but hey good luck zach piven shout out you once again for getting first place in swiss and we're gonna see where you end up you we did see zach Bivens win his top 64 match against ruby sapphire so he is in top 32 and we'll see how that goes for the rest of the day next up we have this amethyst emerald deck that got second place after swiss check this out my goons this deck is playing some interesting cards for the following merfolk pegasus flynn rider we got the snakes the crabs we have madame mims at four the foxes we have four goats four rabbits actually only two crabs now that i noticed that we have tinkerbells at two we have two of the shiftable pegasus this one is from ursula's return these cards are pretty good the new pegasus um the shiftable combo duo basically you play pegasus on turn one which adds a lot of pressure as a one one with evasive you don't need pascal anymore because this pegasus basically is pascal without needing that extra stipulation of having a character on board um and yeah what's pretty cool is you're able to shift on turn three into this pegasus which gives all your characters evasive um which can basically close out the game pretty early on if you're already ramping into some good uh cards like flynn rider so giving your flynn rider evasive for that turn you know can make a huge difference gaining that extra two extra lore where your opponent can't challenge 
the Flynn Rider. So we're not seeing um, any other uh, stuff like Prince John in this list or anything per usual. We are seeing four Diablo, uh, which seems a little mandatory in an Emerald deck, but we're not playing the one drop Diablo in this list, which is fairly interesting. It looks like we're playing Trinobog followers instead. And I do want to go over um, the fact that we are playing Kit Cloud Kicker. I think that card's very good this format. It helps bounce the Diablo as well. Uh, so two Kit Cloud Kicker, and we're playing two Jacques. It's Jacques being from Cinderella, uh, this little dude is a three ink inkable character with one strength four willpower that says when you play this character chosen character gains reckless during their next turn he quests for two which is nice because in this deck you want to be able to capitalize on how much you can quest with and it's also kind of nice because giving an opposing character's diablo reckless um you know might uh, make it so that he had the diablo has to challenge into your madam Mim snake or something or maybe a fox for example um but it definitely can slow the game down in your favor if you're already um having an aggressive opening giving an opposing character's reckless means that they're gonna have to waste some resources or waste a whole turn challenging a character when they might not want to when they might instead uh, want to be able to save that character like a diablo for example and we're also playing three of the shift ursula check this out very important you have multiple targets in this deck actually in this build you only are playing the ursula deceiver so surprised to not see ursula deceiver of all which would be an additional target for this uh, shiftable ursula but we're only playing four of the ursula deceiver which is also nice it's a great two drop you know it has a one three body so it tends to survive on the board for a long time and on turn five if you drop this ursula you're gonna start questing for three and like i just finished saying if you're questing for two with your merfolks your flins your jocks you know by the time you drop this ursula see which you're going to be able to gain a lot of lore that turn in third place after swiss we have brennan bremont shout out you we have a ruby sapphire deck check this out this is not what i expected in a ruby sapphire deck of this high in the standings after swiss but some interesting cards here we're obviously playing the ice block sisu combination we have three of the uninkable sisu this is the sisu with evasive that clears a character with one strength or less and then we have three of the um emboldened warrior sisu the three strength character that's inkable that gains um sorry the three copies character that's inkable that gains strength for every card in the opponent's hand obviously a very good card in the meta right now quest for two adds a lot of pressure but we're seeing some interesting cards like fang crossbow this is like an additional ice block so instead of um uh, choosing a character and lowering its strength by one um you can choose a character and lower its strength by two but it also has an additional ability to banish itself to banish a chosen dragon character which is very relevant this format the sisus are all dragon characters maleficent monstrous dragon is obviously a dragon character so it's almost like an inkable ice block with that extra ability to banish a potential character which is nice we're seeing three maurice's workshop which i think is just amazing gas so big brain i i play this card in red blue and i thought i was crazy i feel so validated now I love this card so much. I think it adds an extra draw engine in red blue that is feels kind of needed sometimes because you know relying on flavor sham is just a little too inconsistent in my opinion. Um, and but you're also playing Scuttle in this build. So um, Scuttle is a new character from Ursula's Return that lets you look at the top four cards of your deck and add an item when you play Scuttle. So you want to probably maximize on your ability to see an item with Scuttle. So you're playing some extra items in this deck like Maurice's Workshop. And Maurice's Workshop is an item that lets you draw cards every time you play another item you just got to pay an extra ink so because of these cards you probably want to play some more items which is why we're seeing the fang crossbow we're seeing one copy of medallion weights which is another card that lets you draw cards which i think is just perfect right um this is a two strength um this is a two cost ruby item it says uh exert pay two extra ink chosen character gains plus two strength this turn and whenever they challenge a character you may draw a card so in combination with scuttle you know you can give your scuttle two plus strength so now he becomes a three three and then when scuttle challenges a character you draw an extra card so i do think this has some decent potential um in this meta and you know playing it as a one of an, an an item deck seems pretty realistic uh, we have great stone dragon which is an item that we've been seeing um kind of come into play this meta um it's, it's item comes in exerted it is a three cost inkable item and it says um exert put a character card from your discard into your inkwell face down and exert it and to capitalize on that item synergy, we're obviously playing Lucky Dime because it's such a great card in this deck. And we're also playing four copies of the Queen Diviner, which is a new legendary in Ursula's Return that says you can exert this card, look at the top four cards from your deck. You may reveal an item card and put it to your hand. If that item card costs three or less, though, you may play it for free instead and it enters play exerted. You put the rest of the cards to the bottom of your deck in any 
orders. So with this card, you can reveal a Maurice's Workshop, a Medallion Weight, a Great Stone Dragon. We have Fish, Bone Quill, Fang Cross, Bill Popsicle, Ice Block. We have a variety of items we can play for free basically because of this queen and if you have maurice as a workshop yes that does trigger in combination of and this character is just a 333 body which is not bad it's, a, it's not a bad card to play on curve if you need to if for whatever reason you can't play some of your other cards and one other thing i really want to know i really want to point out is that we are not playing one jump ahead in this build which is very interesting i thought one jump ahead was kind of mandatory but our only ramp in this build is going to be the fishbone quill so it's looking like we really are trying to uh, you know dig for our um our fishbone quill maybe with scuttle or maybe with the queen and just try and ramp that way but that's very interesting and then we have uh, four copies of brawl because brawl is such a very good card alongside tamatoa and the big sisu which is uh, gonna be your version of be prepared in this deck because we are only playing one B prep and three Medusa because Ice Block lets you Medusa anything you want this format, right? Okay, top four after so we have another Ruby Sapphire list. This one looking a little bit more like the Ruby Sapphire list that I'm used to. So I just want to go over this one. Uh, shout out you, uh, Dewey Nguyen, for getting uh, top four in after Swiss. Uh, check it out. We're playing two Ice Block, four Develop Your Brain, four Popsicle, four One Jump. See, this is what I'm used to. This is more like a standard safe Ruby Sapphire list that you know I, I was expecting to see in top cut. We got the Fishbone Quills, the Brawls, playing two copies of Judy Hops. I think Judy Hops might be relevant this format, especially with all the ice blocks lucky dimes and all that stuff running around so you know maybe consider playing judy hops so you can respect the lucky dime in the mirror match um, i like the maui's fish hook you know obviously only four copies of maui but maui's fish hook still pretty good giving characters evasive so if you need an extra out to diablo you know you have that maui's fish hook at your disposal especially because we're only playing two tremaine two medusa in this list that uh, we are playing two of the sisu and bolded warrior but we're not playing any of the uninkable um sisu the evasive one uh, but this is the only target for our shiftable uh sisu and um, empowered sibling over here uh so the, instead of playing four copies of sisu empowered sibling we are playing more copies of be prepared there's three copies of be prep here one copy of scar which is nice to see we have three copies of how far i'll go two copies of a lucky dime because the card is just broken and then four dragon and four tamatoa because ruby sapphire just likes to be ruby sapphire and playing big boss characters at the end of the game right so um if you guys don't know what this deck does you got to get up from under the rock that you've been sleeping under because this deck is popular this was basically the most represented deck in the top cut about one third of this top cut is this color combination and i guarantee you a lot of the lists are going to look more like this one rather than the first one but maybe after this weekend we're going to start seeing some extra spiciness in these deck lists and here's another Ruby Sapphire just to prove my point. This is by Chris Anderson in top eight. Shout out you. Nothing special in this uh, de deck list in my opinion. It's pretty much standard the way I was thinking people are going to run Ruby Sapphire this format. Four copies of the uh, three ink Sisu Emboldened Warrior which is nice though instead of two copies. I guess you want to have way more shiftable targets because you are playing three of the shiftable Sisu Empowered Sibling and only two B preps. So I think for the most part well, we're kind of playing around with the ratios of how many B preps and Sisus we're playing you know some people playing Tremaine, some people not playing Tremaine. You know, we got three Medusa in this one instead. You know, um, not to say that this deck list is bad or anything. You know, it's just very standard. And if anything, this is probably how I would have played this deck going into this tournament. If I was playing Chicago, I would have probably went with something very safe like Ruby Amethyst or uh, Ruby Sapphire. And if I played Ruby Sapphire, I'd probably play like something exactly like this, if not pretty similar, minus um, how far I'll go, maybe add some locations, because I think locations are very good this format personally. But, you know, this is like a very standard list, and I think this is a very very strong list to play in this format personally now here's some spice for you we have sapphire steel in the top eight after so with brennan decandio and i did just see brennan decandio win his top 64 match so you know he's already at least in top 32 with sapphire steel check this out this list is very interesting love to see it we have obviously four border sphere and four popsicle very similar cards they're one cost items that let you draw and then they have extra abilities three copies of baboom we have two copies of the magic broom the aerial cleaner so this card is a two cost character with two strength three willpower that gains evasive on your turn so the reason you play this is because this is an immediate out to diablo if your opponent drops a diablo you can play this card and if they quest with that diablo next turn your magic broom can sweep up that diablo real quick we're also playing four copies of one jump ahead and two copies of scuttle and i did see him miss off of scuttle twice on stream and he still won so that was tough 
have to see uh four fishbone quill one rise of the titans to deal with pesky locations because just like i was saying i think locations are very powerful this format two smash two zeus two grandma grandma and four flavor shim because you need four flavor shim in this deck right we have whole new world in sapphire steel still making a very big impact in the meta in my opinion i think you now nah, maybe you need you don't need to play a whole new world in sapphire steel there's a couple other lists here that we're not playing whole new world but i feel like it, there is a debate going on whether or not you need to clearly you don't need to if we're seeing multiple lists in top cut with and without it but you still can play whole new world if you like in sapphire steel and to trigger whole new world we have some hefty characters in this like beast hard-headed we have four cogsworth which has ward making him a perfect whole new world target it's He's going to pretty much stay on the board um, unless your opponent's going to respond with something like be prepared or something. And, and if you're playing them on turn five, then they can't respond with that, right? Uh, we have three grab your swords, two let it go, two aerial treasure collector. This is a new aerial from Ursula's return that gains two lore if you have more items in play than the opponent. So this aerial can potentially quest for five. And yes, you guessed it. You can combo this off with lucky dime so that the moment you play this aerial, you can gain five lore. And then the next turn, you will gain 10 lore off of this aerial, putting you at 15 lore in a matter of two turns if you if you have it like that you know but this is sapphire steel sometimes this deck gets as high as 18 to 20 ink in some games even and uh the way we're watching ben decandio play this deck he definitely knows how to do that so we have four giant tinkerbell to close out the heavy the top end of the deck with two lucky dime and three tamatoa so sapphire steel still very popular i think still actually probably even more popular this format than it was last format because i think this has a very good matchup against emerald steel so if you're tired of dealing with buckies maybe consider picking up some flavor shans and forty spheres Here's a list without Whole New World by Orion Duro. Shout out you in the top eight after Swiss. We're playing the four Fortisphere Popsicle package, obviously. Some stuff I want to point out, though, I guess since we're not playing Whole New World, there's some other cards we are playing instead, like two Hades. Very interesting to see Hades being a chapter one legendary that's going to be able to clear a character by putting it into the Inkwell. It is an Inkable, though, so some people don't like that about it. And he is only three strength, so it's a perfect Medusa target. And in this Ice Block format, it makes it even a target for Brawl, potentially. Uh, we are playing three Sad Beasts in this list, though, because we're not playing Whole New World. So maybe you want more draw power. And we're playing four, sorry, three Bell Strange, but special. And three of the Aerial Treasure Collector. And I really want to point out that we're playing Avalanche in this deck. I like Avalanche in Sapphire Steel because you can um, respond to Bucky. Um, with avalanche if you used one jump ahead so on turn two if you go one jump ahead and they respond with bucky um, on your turn three you'll be able to have potentially four ink and you can use avalanche on them and deal one damage to everybody clearing the bucky and in the later game avalanche is still a way to deal with locations um, so instead of playing one rise of the titans you know I, I would probably play one avalanche in this deck too and in top 16 after this we have our first emerald steel bucky list yes you heard that there wasn't a single emerald steel in the top eight after swiss but remember at the same time if you have a very good record um probably going like 5-0 in the tournament you can take some intentional draws in your later rounds and that will bump your seating down so it's not to say anything too crazy but you know emerald steel definitely in this top 64 we have bucky definitely in this top 64 for bucky obviously this list by scott shervin shout out you for getting a nice run in top 64 we got diablos we have Pegasus uh, and other Pegasus all at four. A very standard list um, minus the uh, Flynn Rider that I'm seeing here, which is kind of cool. Uh, this Flynn Rider can quest for four potentially if your opponent does not have cards in their hand. And if you're playing four Bucky with four Aladdin and four Diablo, uh, you have uh, plenty of Flood Warrants to ensure your opponent is not going to have cards in their hand. Uh, we're also playing three copies of We Don't Talk About Bruno and one copy of I Find Them, I Flatten Them, which is a song that costs four. It's inkable and it's going to be able to banish all items on the field so it's a pretty powerful song against any sapphire deck especially that sapphire steel deck that likes to benefit a little bit more by having more items than you right so emerald steel very popular this format if you're trying to you know deal with buckies you know, consider like commenting and subscribing to this channel if you want to be a lurkana goon because it does support and so you can get more tips on how to combat the meta Next up, we have a Ruby Amethyst list. Shout out Kurt Spice for putting Ruby Amethyst on the map. Fellow Ruby Amethyst players, rise up. The deck is not dead yet. Love to see it. And check this out. We are playing four copies of Magic Broom. I called it. I made a tweet 
actually the other day saying that uh, we're gonna see brooms in the top cut of this tournament and there we go kurt spice come making the making the tweet come to life shout out you we have four copies of chernabog followers four copies of magic broom illuminary keeper and then we have four copies of flynn rider frenemy which is you know very powerful against sapphire in the early game you can drop flynn and you can potentially start gaining three lore every turn against most sapphire decks because they have a very slow opening uh, we're also playing three Cusco, three snake very interesting we got four copies of brawl which feels mandatory in this diablo format and then we're also playing crab still we have four rabbit four fox four goat obviously friends on the other side no maleficent sorceress so we're not playing maleficent sorceress to draw cards on turn three it's looking like we're playing sisu Embo embodied warrior instead um on turn three which is a very powerful turn three card uh, we have three copies of beat king undisputed in this list which i like to see no copies of tremaine anymore it's looking like we're just going with the beat king instead of tremaine which is a very similar card minus the body um three be prepared two medusa four maui and four queen's castle which feels mandatory this format now i do want to just talk about the brooms also ruby amethyst seems uh pretty consistent to what it uh, was looking like last format um but with the addition of the brooms the beat king some extra removal in the early game which is really going to help you out against that emerald matchup and i feel like the brooms are really good with the turnabog followers because they help you out draw the bucky situation that you kind of go through um being able to play a character on turn one that can contest the opposing diablo i um, mean making it so they can't like quest on that early turn one but then also being able to draw off that card is kind of important and then following that up with brooms um and playing characters and triggering that room to draw extra cards is actually pretty decent so uh sometimes it feels like you can actually like out draw the diablo discard package especially because they're not gaining value off of it the way they used to with prince john so with no Prince John in that deck, I feel like the matchup is a lot more winnable than what it was last format even. So, um, But if, obviously if they drop double Bucky on you or if they have Bucky plus removal plus Aladdin, then it does feel, it still feels pretty unwinnable, right? But sometimes you can, you can get some some pretty good uh, some pretty good wins against Emerald Steel with Ruby Amethyst still. Here is another Ruby Amethyst by Adrian Mercury. Shout out you uh, playing Teeth and Ambitions. We also have some other new cards like Peter Pan Shadow Finder. This is a three ink uninkable character with Rush and Evasive. And he has an ability that says your other characters with evasive gain rush so you don't have any other evasive characters in this build so that extra ability doesn't take into account just yet but you can respond to diablo um, um with this card so if your opponent has a diablo on turn two or three and they've already been questing with it if you have a peter pan shadow finder it has rush so you can play him and just immediately clear that diablo which is nice and it looks like we have some extra other diablo removal targets like teeth and ambitions in this list and uh, we're still seeing four Cusco, which is fairly interesting, and three, Jim Hawkins. I'm honestly surprised to see Jim Hawkins in this meta. Can, yeah, can, I'm very surprised about that one. And only for Queen's Castle for that Jim Hawkins. Queen Castle, like I just finished saying, seems kind of mandatory, this format in Ruby Amethyst. And I I, I, I can see why. Uh, Queen's Castle can kind of take the game away. And uh, maybe playing Jim Hawkins on turn five um, is just that extra that extra little oomph you need uh, to kind of push, push, push that game over the edge sometimes. I do want to point out this list is not playing Lady Tremaine. We do have only three Medusa, two Bee King Undisputed, and four Be Prepared. All right, now we got the big spice. Now we have the big spice coming up. We have Joseph Quigley. Shout out you with this Emerald Amber deck list in top 16 after Swiss. Look at this, guys. We're playing four Diablo, one drop, four Key to Goons, four Flynn Rider, three Painting the Roses Red, Sudden Chill Out 4, Bare Necessities, Ursa the Deceiver, Ariel, Diablo, Prince, John, and the Muses. We're playing all those at four. We have two You Have Forgotten Me, two Cricky, four Kita, three Lucifer, four We Don't Talk About Bruno, and three Under the Sea. Oh my gosh, this is this this is really cool. Like I, I was really excited to play this color combination, this format, and there was a point in time where I felt like it, it just wasn't it just wasn't gonna happen because the matchups were unwinnable or something. But now I'm looking at this list and I'm I'm like theorying and I'm thinking and I'm you know I'm thinking this deck might actually be the sauce. You know I love You Have Forgotten Me. I think this card is so good discard two from the opponent's hand that's crazy and if you have prince john you draw two that's double crazy and then you follow up with lucifer on turn five that's just disrespectful shout out you just quickly getting top 16 with amber um emerald it's something that i did not expect at all honestly uh, if you don't know how this deck works obviously in the beginning of the game you want to start off with your keto or your diablo so you can shift into a diablo and start drawing cards because that's just good but later on you want to be able to capitalize on the ability to play prince john and um discard cards with uh that and said you want to also be able to use muses and ariel to search for your discard cards like bare necessities 
or sudden chill and anytime you play any of those cards muses is gonna let you bounce back and any character on the board with two strength or less so you can bounce back your own ariel and play ariel again later you can bounce back your lucifers you can bounce back your flins and ready them again you can bounce back the opposing characters cards too so if you're dealing with like um a situation where your opponent might shift sisu on turn six you can bounce back their sisus potentially you know in the early game against emerald you bounce back their diablos and it makes it really hard for them to play the game and like post turn five six you can shift kita and then sing under the sea and under the sea is a sing together card so if you're curving out nicely with kita flynn rider prince john and then muses or something you'll be able to play under the sea um pretty early on into the game because you have that shift kita Painting the Roses Red and Shift Kita are cards that lower the opposing character's strength, so it'll probably put them in range for Under the Sea, which is nice. And we don't talk about Bruno as another form of removal in this deck, uh, especially alongside the Prince John, which is going to let you draw anytime you discard. And Cricky's really good because he's a character that gives all your characters plus three strength this turn. So there is a situation where sometimes you have a lingering Ursula, a Lucifer, or a Flynn, and your opponent has a fat location. You can just play Cricky and you can solve that problem fairly easily now because before you didn't have location outs in Emerald, but now you do. So shout out you Joseph Quigley for putting Emerald Amber on the map. Love to see it. This one, this one hits this one hits home. This one hits me. This one hits me in here because I was I was really testing this deck. We have another Emerald Amethyst list that I want to go over. This one fairly interesting. A little bit different than the one we saw in the beginning of the video. We have um, Hey Hey, the um, rooster being played um, at two. We have three. Uh, it's a three cost character. We have two of them in the deck. He's a two strength, three willpower character that says when you play this character, if an opponent has more cards in their inkwell than you, you may put the top card of your deck into the inkwell face down and exert it. So he's like a one jump ahead with a body. But it's interesting to see this card in Emerald because this is the first time, I believe anyways, that Emerald has the ability to ramp ink you know um the the uh, stipulation is very specific you need to have less ink than the opponent um so you can only play this like after turn three or turn four or something like that and you have to play it before you ink sometimes so um that is kind of a situation but it may it can catch you up into the game especially if you're playing an aggro deck like um emerald amethyst um, we're also playing four dolores madrigal uh, this is a card that lets you draw um on play when your opponent has a, sh a exerted character um so that tends to happen a lot it's not a it's not too hard of, of a condition to me um but i personally feel like when i play this card it always stays in my hand because man, it just never have it never resolves on my end but um the, the body is nice 433 and quest for two so you know it's not a bad card at all um and then we're obviously playing the um, pegasus at four with the four um, pegasus the one drop and the uh, five drop uh, and then we have pascal on this list as well and uh, we're also playing queen's castle and the ursula sea witch queen at two once again now we're not playing ursula deceiver of all anymore dang it's looking like ursula deceiver of all is just not being played as much this format but it's good to know that we can play ursula deceiver at four and still have room to play the shiftable ursula because i think the shiftable ursula is really good next up we have the only amethyst steel in top cut it's a jafar steel wheel deck and it's looking looking pretty basic this is looking very much like last format so uh shout out by craig carver uh this is the list online for the top 32 amethyst steel this is the chicago challenge and yeah just like i'm saying there's no there's not a single card here from ursula's return format it's um it's looking like an inklands deck and uh, i like i like to see it so if you've been playing this deck since inklands you know um good for you you don't have to change a single card right uh but we're all playing of uh, captain hook fire the cannons we have the three drop uh sorry we have the two drop jafar at three um this character gains evasive on your turn so that helps you out diablo uh, we're playing blue fairy which is nice to see i would have thought we'd be playing the aladdin floodborne to make your blue fairy a little bit more live but i guess not you know uh we have uh, two copies so we have three copies of Smee, two copies of benja and then we're playing the four copies of jafar dreadnought to trigger your blue fairy and after that we also want to be able to shift Jafar obviously so these two copies of Jafar to ship it kind of easily and um, are kind of nice to see so if you don't know how this deck works you basically want to capitalize on whole new world with Jafar as much as possible because you gain lore anytime you draw so you can burst yourself into gaining 7 to 14 lore if you have that many whole new worlds but in general you have plenty of draw power cards in this deck like rabbits friends on the other sides Yzmas that'll help you trigger that Jafar as well 
real quick here's another emerald steel list this one by brian cortate shout out you this list playing hidden cove which is kind of nice to see i've been seeing hidden cove see a lot of play this format this is a location card it's a one cost location with a one move cost and six willpower that says chosen character gains plus one strength and plus one willpower while here so what this does is basically if you move your bucky into this hidden cove it puts it out of range for something like tinkerbell if you move your diablo to this hidden cove they can no longer clear it with grab your swords or baboom so hidden cove kind of nice to be able to give your characters a little bit more defense we're also playing um two copies of the one drop flynn rider with three copies of the shiftable flynn rider that can quest for four potentially and i love to see that personally it's a more floodborne characters in this list for bucky obviously so maybe you want to maximize on your ability to play a Floodborne as early as possible. This list still playing Ursula Deceiver of All with Sudden Chill, whereas some of the other lists are not playing that, um, you know, but we are seeing some other cards get cut out. Like we only have one Baboom in this list. I don't see any Fire the Cannons. Uh, we're obviously playing four Strength and four Storm Rage on because you want to be able to sing those with Ursula Deceiver of All, but we only have two copies that we don't talk about Bruno and only one copy of Along Came Zeus. So I feel like maybe in a build like this, locations might be a little bit tough to deal with sometimes. Now this is some super spice bro we have our first ruby amber deck in top cut and it's not playing mufasa by the way so check this out hybrid control top 32 mark wooden shout out you for playing this very interesting deck it's a ruby amber list playing a variety of cards that i haven't seen played in a in a tournament deck ever <laughs> so we have four of the one drop mulan four of the two drop flynn rider frenemy um we have four mother gothel so this mother gothel and the mulan they come into um play with damage on them already um which is very nice in combination with the four rapunzel um that we have to be able to use i'm surprised they're not playing julieta madrigal julieta is another card like rapunzel um that lets you draw when you heal your characters but it's looking like we're only playing the rapunzel as our heal draw um package in this build wow very interesting and then we have two copies of pegasus flying steed uh two copies of teats and ambitions two bare necessities two agrabah we have four bra four pongo four sisu uh the warrior we have two bee king undisputed three super goof wow and i'm over here hating on super goof on the market watch videos and now i see a super goof in top cut you know what i take everything back i'm sorry for disrespecting you super goof we have two hades two moana the voyager so this moana is cool because this moana lets you um contest diablos as well it's a uh, four cost character that's inkable that has three strength and four willpower and evasive uh, we're also playing uh, three copies of the prince eric um expert uh salesman so this is going to be uh a four ink uninkable prince eric with two strength two willpower he quests for two so he adds that extra pressure and he has an ability that says when this character is banished you may banish chosen character so kind of nice i'd love to combine this card with teeth and ambitions because you can um you know destroy your own uh, prince eric and then be able to banish an opposing character for rapunzel because it's rapunzel lets you draw cards uh we have uh, two copies of you have forgotten me four maui three tremaine three medusa two be prepared two surfer stitch and one copy of chernabog's followers very interesting a deck list very interesting deck list the top end seems very powerful with the beat preps and the stitches a lot of two ofs and three ofs you know what i mean not a lot of four ofs in this deck list so let me know what you guys think of this deck list no mufasa in ruby amber um control which is kind of cool to see i i i, I always felt like the, this color combination could work out in a meta especially if you're playing a more control variant but if you are a Mufasa enjoyer, don't be worried because we do have a Mufasa deck as well in the top cut playing out today. Check it out. We have four copies of Mulan, Mother Gothel. We're playing three Pegasus Flying Steed, which just seems like a good card in this color combination. This is the second time we see it, right? This build is playing Julieta Madrigal, which is nice to see. Um, and then we have two copies of the Peter Pan Neverland Hero, which is a three ink inkable character that's going to have one strength three willpower he quests for two and has an ability and he has rush so that's kind of nice has an ability that gains three strength if you have a tinkerbell we aren't playing any tinkerbells here so that never comes into factor but still kind of nice we have three copies of the um the sisu the one the three cost uninkable sisu the the sisu lets you clear one cost characters very interesting to see uh three copies in this list three copies of b king undisputed prince we have uh two copies of prince eric as well um we're playing four rapunzel four maui 
four Mufasa. We have two Lady Tremaine, three Mulan Elite Archer. So you can shift your, your turn one Mulan. We're playing three copies of Peter Pan Pirate's Bane. So maybe that's why we play the uh, Neverland Hero. So we can shift our Pirate's Bane on turn four and possibly clear a Diablo. Because this character has evasive, which is nice. So we're playing one Stitch Abomination, one Be Prepared. So it does not get in the way of our Mufasa. And four copies of Surface Stitch, three copies of Maleficent Dragon. Oh, and three copies of Sisu Empowered Sibling. So I was wondering why we were playing um, the, uh, this Sisu, uh, the three cost Sisu, but now I see you want to have a ship target as well. But yeah, um, very interesting uh, to see three Brawl, three B King, and one B Prep in a Mufasa deck. So you're playing seven, seven non character targets. You know, ideally, you don't want to hit a non character off of Mufasa, but there's only seven of them out of your 60 card deck. You know, I, I feel like the odds are definitely in your favor. So shout out you, Hans Kruger, for getting top cut with the Mufasa. All the Mufasa players, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this deck is very viable this format i think so viable in fact we have another mufasa deck in tafka but this is a little bit different this is amber steel mufasa so i was pretty surprised to not see gaston in that last mufasa list this is the first time we see gaston in this tafka um, but this gaston is going to be played at three in this deck and he basically lets you pay two less for the next character you play that turn so if you play this on turn three that means on turn four you can play something as big as hercules or giant tinkerbell right here um, um for your turn six and if he survives the turn then on turn four you can start playing playing cards like Simba, Fighting Prince, or Stitch Carefree Surfer on turn four, on turn five, which is kind of nuts, <laughs> right? So in this list, uh, we're playing uh, some interesting cards. We have two copies of a boom. We have three whole new world, two strength of a raging fire, and two grab your swords as your non characters so two four six two four six nine we have nine non characters in the in this deck list uh so, you know, so those are some non mufasa targets you might hit but we have some pretty good mufasa targets as well like this hercules hero this chen po this giant tinkerbell we also have chernobog surfer stitch the symbol like i was talking about some very good mufasa targets some draw power with rapunzel here we're playing the magic broom aerial cleaner to contest diablos we have pluto's here docs and gaston's we have three different characters now in amber that can help you cheat out ink which is kind of nice too um and i can kind of see how this deck works out because if you can cheat out um like a five or six character early on you can sing whole new world pretty early which is cool too and we're playing two chifu chifu is a three cost inkable character that has zero strength five willpower but he had he gains two lore if he has no damage on him so this can potentially quest for three and this deck can uh, be pretty aggressive from what i've seen i do believe this guy was playing on stream and he was able to quest up pretty quickly so a very interesting Mufasa deck in Top Cut. Shout out you, Zach Kite, for making Top Cut at the DLC Chicago with Mufasa Amber Steel. And last but not least, I want to go over another Ruby Amethyst list because Ruby Amethyst is my favorite deck. <laughs> so uh, this list playing some interesting cards like Super Goof. We have the Pegasus at four. We're not. Uh, we are playing Flynn Rider as well, which seems like a mandatory card in Ruby Amethyst nowadays. Um, but this list is playing the Mulan uh, Injured Soldier at four and two of the Mulan Hidden Archer, uh, Elite Archer. I mean, sorry. So so uh, to be able to shift through Mulan in Ruby Amethyst is not something I thought uh, people would be doing, but that's kind of nice to see. So uh, maybe try that out in your Ruby Amethyst list. Uh, we're not playing medusa in this deck list either so that's something i wanted to point out we only have three lady tremaine but no medusa three b prep one scar is what it's looking like and no crabs so very interesting a lot of interesting deck lists in this top cut tournament for the dlc chicago so let me know what you guys think of these top cut deck lists that i went over in this video there were 64 deck lists we didn't go through all of them we went through a decent amount of them though and um if you want any of these deck lists the links are in the description below uh shout out ink decks for having them up shout out people BG for getting the information out. Shout out all the players playing the DLC Chicago. Good luck to everybody going to any future Disney Lorcana challenges in the future. We're going to be at Fort Worth, so be sure to look out for us there. Until then, remember to stay tuned to Lorcana Goons, and we'll see you goons next time.